One game that has always stuck with me was Shovel Knight. Its simple NES-like graphics along with the playstyle found in that era of gaming has always fascinated me. How can a game with the style and gameplay found in the 80s cultivate such a massive modern day audience? Well, let's take a look back and see what led to Shovel Knight's enormous fame. Before we talk about Shovel Knight's history, let's talk a bit about its gameplay and story. Now, I'll mainly be going over the first Shovel Knight campaign that came out in 2014, which was retroactively changed to Shovel of Hope when more story modes were added to the game. This led to the game being currently called Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Also, spoilers ahead. We begin the story like many other games, with a bit of backstory showing us who Shovel Knight is and what he was doing prior to the game's start. Shovel Knight, along with his friend Shield Knight, were travelers adventuring through their land, collecting treasure and being heroes. One day while they were traveling through the Tower of Fate, Shield Knight was cursed with a terrible magic caused by a cursed amulet. Once awoken, Shovel Knight tried looking for Shield Knight, but to no avail. After failing to find Shield Knight, Shovel Knight decides to live a life of solitude, but without these two heroes, their lands were soon left in ruin being taken over by the evil enchantress and her order of no quarter. With evil overrunning the land and the tower being unsealed once again, Shovel Knight sets off on his new journey to help find and save Shield Knight. With the backstory over, we are now off on our digging adventure. Now this is a good place to talk a little bit about the gameplay of Shovel Knight. This game is a 2D platformer where we wield our shovel both as a weapon to attack our enemies and as a way to dig up treasure, along with giving us a bit of movement in the air by bouncing on certain objects and enemies. Many of these game mechanics are reminiscent to other NES games such as DuckTales or the Second Legend of Zelda game. Along with our trusty shovel, we can use a limited supply of magic through the use of multiple relics hidden in some levels. These relics range from magical fire wands and amulets to big knuckles. Besides collecting relics, we also collect treasure and music sheets. The treasure can be found by digging up the ground, killing enemies, or just laying around in each shovel, and is the main form of currency in this game, allowing us to buy health and magic restoration items, weapons, and new types of armor. Much like the relics, our armor can also affect our gameplay, as it can grant us secondary abilities. While this game isn't too difficult, seeing as we have an infinite number of lives, if we do die, we still lose a large amount of our treasure each time. But we still have the ability to collect the fallen treasure as it floats in a sack as we return to the place where we died. Along with the infinite lives, each level has a set number of checkpoints, allowing us to not respawn back at the beginning of the level every time we die. The music sheets that we collect in our adventure unlocks new background music that will play according to the area we are in. Now that we explored more of the gameplay, let's get back into the story of Shovel Knight's first campaign, Shovel of Hope. After the flashback, we start journeying to the tower in the hopes of finding Shield Knight. Through our journey, we start meeting some interesting people and fight with our former rival Black Knight. As we progress through each level, we start learning more and more about the world and what happened to Shield Knight. Adventuring through the world, we start dueling against the Order of No Quarter, consisting of the Black Knight, Spectre Knight, King Knight, Treasure Knight, Plague Knight, Mole Knight, Polar Knight, Tinker Knight, and Propeller Knight, with the endgame being against the Enchantress. I will say, the boss fights in Shovel Knight's main campaign were always super fun to play against as you try and find their weakness by using a relic or a new armor upgrade to get the upper hand. And along with these boss fights, we fight against Black Knight two more times with him finally revealing the truth about what happened to Shield Knight. Black Knight starts to explain that Shield Knight is actually the evil enchantress, the big bad of the game. As we begin fighting the evil enchantress, Shovel Knight exercises the cursed amulet from the evil enchantress, turning her back into Shield Knight. Although the game isn't over yet as the spirit inhabiting the cursed amulet turns into the monster known as the Remnant of Fate. In this battle, Shovel Knight and Shield Knight team up to fight against this evil monster, with Shield Knight sacrificing herself to hold back against the Remnant, as an unconscious Shovel Knight gets carried out by Black Knight. Although we learn later on that Shield Knight won the battle, and meeting with the sleeping Shield Knight at his campfire. While the story isn't all that special, it's the gameplay that shines, and to learn more about who created the gameplay, let's talk about the development of Shovel Knight. This game was designed by Nick Wozniak and his team, known as Yacht Club Games, who wanted to make a game that would be a sort of callback to the aesthetics found in old NES games that they had played when they were children, like Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, which can be found in the sword thrusting like shovel that Shovel Knight uses. The game's name Shovel Knight came from a brainstorming session where the only other good name they had was Plummet Knight, which doesn't sound like the best name for their main character. Once they settled on their idea, they had to come up with a way to fund this project, so they crowdsourced it. Through Kickstarter, they set a minimum goal of $75,000 starting on March 17th, 2013. They crushed this goal in less than a month. In fact, they received over four times their minimum goal with them receiving 
$502 when they ended the funding on April 13th of the same year. This also fulfilled some of their stretch goals too, such as multiple modes, a new game plus, and multi-platform support. Along with the NES style graphics, they also stayed true to the NES style of development, using a chiptune soundtrack to mimic the style of music found in those old school games. Along with this style of music, they also used the limited graphics palette and sprite count. This led to various tweaks in the games, like using only 4 colors for the graphical color palette, and having a black background to limit the use of needless color. Along with this, they also layered the user interface of the game on the background instead of the foreground, a developmental choice that many old school games have done. Originally, the game was supposed to be released 5 months after they ended their Kickstarter in September 2013, but they delayed their game a few times. Finally, they announced on June 5th, 2014 that they would release their game at the end of the month on June 26th, 2014. Along with the main PC release, the game was released on multiple platforms in the following months and years. They also began adding additional content to the game through free DLC such as new modes and multiple new campaigns allowing you to play as the other boss knights that you faced in the original story mode. All this free content was given to us starting in 2017, with the game's name changing from just Shovel Knight to Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. With this name change, any game bought or downloaded after April 2017 was given the compilation of all the DLC, along with renaming the original campaign mode Shovel of Hope. Seeing as the game was crowdsourced with over 4 times the original funding goal, this game was bound to be a success, and it was. Many critics loved the characters, graphics, and the chiptune style of music accompanying every level. Not only was the game great, but also many people considered it to be the best game of 2014 with it winning the 2014 Game Awards Best Independent Game. The notoriety of the game left behind a huge legacy that few indie games have been able to follow. Shovel Knight crossed over into not only many indie franchises, but also came into the big leagues with Shovel Knight and some of the other boss knights getting an amiibo figure, and Shovel Knight also becoming an assist trophy in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch. While this game didn't get a sequel, it did receive a spin-off game called Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon that released on December 13th, 2021 on multiple platforms. Shovel Knight shook the industry and showed how great gameplay and a unique art style could mesh so well into a great game. Its countless number of campaign modes, battle modes, and interesting characters made this game a goldmine in great content. This game also showed that they could rival AAA games with a small staff, showing what it means to truly develop a fantastic game. This has been The History of Shovel Knight by Yacht Club Games. If you want to watch how another small developer made a big splash in the industry, click here to watch the history of Undertale, and make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.